late 80s, early 90s was, a, was an interesting time in Chicago. You know, although there was a lot of music going on, we weren't a big part of it. I mean, we were still kind of the weird odd man out, the red-headed stepchild of Chicago. But apart from the Pumpkins, there was a great scene going on, which was Material Issue and Urge Overkill, Slam and Watusis, or Precious Wax Strippings. I mean, those guys were absolutely fantastic with Giant Machine on drums. I used to go see them every time I could. It was like going to a drum clinic, you know, or going to get a drum lesson and watch him play, because uh, he was so fantastic and still is. But, you know, I think Urge and, and Material, like they were, they were kind of a family unit. Those guys hung out a lot together. And I saw Jim and Nash and Blackie and those guys around, um, but we weren't necessarily like, we weren't much of a hang. Like we were, we were kind of in competition with each other. I think they were trying to play, you know, their kind of cool brand of music. And we were just interested in kind of just melting people's faces. I mean, there was, we had, we had already accepted the fact that there was really nothing cool about the way we looked, so we were just going to concentrate on the, on the music part of it, while those guys were infinitely cool and had the cool car and the great hair and the blue coats, you know, and this convertibles, and all the girls were hanging out with them. We were like, all right, man, well, I'm just going to go practice my drums now, <laughs> you know, and hope, you know, some girl talks to me at some point. But, I mean, those guys, you know, they, 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 really, they really dialed it in. I mean, they had tons of identity. They lived like rock stars. They really, they really dialed it in for Chicago in a great way. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the music. I mean, I'm a, I'm a jump up and down fan for Urge Overkill. I'm a huge fan of Material Issue. We played with him many, many times. And Mike Zelenko is a great drummer. And Blackie, of course, was just another hero of mine. I mean, I always felt like, whether I was older than those guys or not, I always felt like those guys were kind of my big brothers just because they were just too, like my brother never let me hang out with him either. So these guys were kind of like, they were big brothers in the way that they were like, they weren't going to let us hang out with them. I mean, once the Pumpkins got so big that you couldn't deny our presence, like we were on the side of buses and park benches and we had our own cow downtown, then they were like, okay, well, finally you guys, if you can file, finally tell you where the party is tonight. But before that, it was like, fuck you guys, right? But, but still, I mean, not in a, not in a bad way, just because they were just trying to make their party a better party by not having us show up. <laughs> yeah, it was a great ride. I mean, it was super fun. And Chicago is such a great place to be famous because people were actually nice and they actually, you know, respected you for doing work. Uh, they didn't think you just kind of stumbled across your fame. I mean, they knew you were working hard if you were pulling it off in Chicago. So I remember like Bohemia and fill in the blanks and, you know, I would get the Illinois Entertainer and see, you know, when the punk scene was going on in Chicago, although I was a little young for that. And, you know, eventually, you know, the band uh, really did get supported uh, in a great way by, by everybody in Chicago. And, and I think once everybody figured out that I had Doc Martens and a black biker leather too, and I was, you know, hanging out at Smart Bar, you know, till four in the morning every night, you know, I kind of got let into the inner sanctum, you know, with Jolly and certainly Martin and all those guys and Al. Um, you know, who were just great, just great guys. And then Ogre and I went on to be good friends and those guys and um, Raven, you know, Paul Raven. But yeah, those, I think that that scene for me was just more about our collective darkness as individuals, more so than it was about the music or anything, because we were all extremely dark people back then. Mm -hmm.